we're going to look at this differential equation and initial condition. Uh, we're supposed to solve the initial value problem, so that's what we have here, and give the interval of existence of the solution. And in particular, that's the part I really want to emphasize. All right, so here we have a differential equation. This is the very simplest kind of differential equation, the kind that you actually solved in Calc 1, where you've got dy dx equals just a function of x. And so it's very straightforward to solve this one. You're just going to undo the differentiation and find your y as a function of x. So y will be the integral of this. There's a little u substitution that happens here at this point. Probably you can do that u substitution in your head. u equals x minus 1. du is equal to dx. And so you just do the integration here. So the 4 will come along. And then I would think about this as u to the negative 2 thirds. So doing that integration, I'd add 1 to that. So I'd have u to the 1 third over 3, or times 3 times u which was x minus 1 to the 1 third and plus c. All right, so this is our general solution to our differential equation. This is an explicit solution because it's solved for y. General solution to this differential equation. Because I have an initial condition, I can go ahead and find the particular solution that goes through this point. It's really a point, 0 comma negative 10. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to be putting in the numbers for the appropriate variables here and use those to find my c. All right, so 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and then the 1 third power is a cube root. So cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So I have negative 10 equals 12 times negative 1, negative 12 plus c, and we'll get c equals 2. All right, so our solution to the initial value problem here is y equals, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and make that just 12 times x minus 1 to the 1 third plus 2. All right, so at that point, we've done the first part of what it asks us to do, solve the initial value problem. The second part of what we need to do here, though, is to think about the interval of existence of this solution. And so what you're looking for is an interval of x values for which this solution actually satisfies the differential equation. And so there are several places where uh, you might run into trouble with a solution satisfying the differential equation. One question might be, are there any discontinuities in the function? This function, though, is continuous everywhere. This is a 1 -third power, so that's a cube root. And so we can have anything inside the cube root, positive number, negative number, 0. This function is continuous everywhere. But in order to satisfy the differential equation, it also has to be differentiable. And so if we think about the derivative, which is actually what we started with here, you see that you run into some trouble with that derivative at x equals 1. This x minus 1 on the denominator would indicate that to you. So this function here is differentiable on the interval from negative infinity to 1 or the interval from 1 to infinity. And so a lot of times what I see students do is write down both of these intervals here uh, as the answer. But that's not actually correct. The solution to the differential equation cannot jump across this place where it's not differentiable and still satisfy the differential equation. So the important thing to pay attention to is where is your initial condition? Remember that these are x values. And so I need to think about where is my initial condition for x. So I have x equals 0. That is in this interval. So this solution satisfies this differential equation on just this interval. It can't jump across that place where the function is no longer differentiable and still satisfy the differential equation. It can have a different solution that satisfies the differential equation on this other interval, but not this one. So this is our interval of existence. OK, so that's an important thing. The textbook homework and the online homework that you have often just asks you for a solution. And many of the problems don't ask you to give an interval of existence. 
please focus on those ones that do and make sure that you really understand how to do that so that when you get to an exam, this last part here isn't a stretch for you. This isn't too hard. You're just thinking about the continuity of the function. Any place the function's not continuous, it would fail to be differentiable. And then any other places where the function might fail to be differentiable. And then you're just choosing the interval that contains your initial condition. So it's not hard, it's just a matter of making sure you practice and think about that every time you solve a differential equation.